Federal Executive Council has approved the revised medium-term expenditure framework and the 2020 budget. The revised estimates are based on $25 per barrel of crude oil at a production rate of 1.94 million barrels a day. Details in subsequent bulletins. Now the current COVID-19 crisis is challenging the di delivery of essential services to the most affected segments of the population, children of, and families who are already vulnerable due to social economic exclusion or those who live in overcrowded settings are particularly at risk. However, the Ethiopian government have put measures in place to hedge against economic impact of COVID-19. I am now joined by Zemedene Negatu, Global Chairman of the Fairfax Africa Fund. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Certainly. Now, we understand that the Ethiopian government has come up with six key policy measures to hedge against the econ economic impact of COVID-19. Kindly run us through that. Sure. I mean, as you said, there are a number of measures taken by the Ethiopian government. Uh, to counter the impact of the COVID-19. Some of the key highlights is they have set aside uh, 15 billion, 16 billion Ethiopian, which is equivalent to almost $500 million to inject liquidity into the banking sector so that the banks can provide uh, additional credit or roll over existing loans. They've also provided a tax relief uh, to the tune of 78 billion bid, which is the equivalent to approximately $2.1 billion. It's designed to defer tax payments, for certain, especially for certain industries that have been hit hard, uh, like the hospitality and the flower industry. Ethiopia is a major exporter of flowers, but as you know, because of COVID, uh, the flower business in Europe and globally has slowed down. So again, it's designed to support the particular industries that have been hit hard. But some of the other things uh, they've done, which have been, they've been very successful so far, is securing $411 million from the IMF, and $82 million from the World Bank. In addition to that, over 200 million euros have been committed by several European countries. So overall, they put together a package that is designed to mitigate that, like any other, like everywhere else in the world, including here in the United States, the global economy and African economy is going to be hit hard, but at least they've put together a plan. On top of that, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, on behalf of Africa, is leading an initiative to request and so far they've been successful, the G20 countries to defer or possible cancel the debt of African countries. Now, the deferment part by the World Bank and the IMF already, but, but they're waiting for others to take it hold. But so there are a number of initiatives they put in place. As I said. Now, I just want to add to, to this, that overall, having said that, the IMF this year is forecasting that and the World Bank are forecasting Africa as a whole will be in a recession, but there are two or three countries, just a handful of countries that will still be growing, and one of them is Ethiopia. They're looking at 3.2, 3.5% GDP growth. The Ethiopian government is targeting actually 6% GDP growth. So it's one of the few exceptions that is going to see a positive growth this year. All right, now, what is Ethiopia doing to mitigate against price gouging, which, of course, is price inflation? During this period. Right. A very good point. A very good point. Even in the developed world, as you know, price gouging is, is, is a problem here in the United States. The government is taking action. So in Ethiopia as well, they have uh, put together a task force that goes around and verifies prices compared to the normal pricing. And they're taking legal action of, against those. Because, you know, COVID, uh, unfortunately, is also impacting people at the lower end. And, and the people in the informal sector. And food inflation, in particular in Africa, including Ethiopia, is the biggest component. So addressing that has been a priority for the government. From everything we've seen so far, they've been taking very strict measures to make sure that prices are not out, out of line. And also they're subsidizing certain types of basic foods like edible oil and other things. So they're trying. However, I mean, this is a global pandemic, and uh, it is, it's not easy to counter you know, the greed that may exist. And again, I see it here in the U.S., so uh, I think it's not unusual, but the government is taking steps, as I said, by subsidizing and by do, by taking enforcements, going around the marketplaces and checking and, and closing down whenever necessary, closing down businesses that are price gouging. Now, one of the government's plan is to inject liquidity into the system, particularly right. going through... One of the government's plans is to inject liquidity into the system, particularly going through banks, more importantly. However, mm. would the lending rate be favorable to those that the fund has been intended to reach? So, 
uh, again, it's a very good point you're raising. Uh, there are two, two or three things that are happening in the banking sector. As I said, the injection of liquidity has helped. So the banks are now a bit have more liquidity to uh, extend loans, but in many cases, sector specific, but they're reducing interest rates. In some cases, one of the banks, for example, is reducing interest rates to virtually zero for the flower exporters, which have been hit real hard. But uh, the hospitality, the hotel industry also getting favorable treatment by the banks. Uh, deferring payments, but as well as reducing the interest rates by something like five or six percent from the standard rate. So everybody's trying to cooperate because it's a national issue, it's a global issue. But as you said, the, that liquidity injection has helped. And then the, the, the fiscal policies that have been taken, especially, for example, expedited refunding of VAT, and also deferring payments, for example, withholdings from employees, salary taxes, and pensions for another four or five months is also going to help the, the, the companies get over, because we need to think of post-COVID. I mean, everybody around the world is now fighting COVID, but these new businesses need to stay in business, and that's what I think the government is, is, is trying to do, is support them in these difficult times through the banking sector, physical policies, and other measures like getting aid, uh, financial support from the World Bank, the IMF, and the G20. Zemedene Negatu, thank you so much for joining us on the news. Thank you. Certainly.